Hello everyone, I'm Ahmed Gad, a teaching assistant at the Faculty of Computers and Information in Fan University in Egypt. In this video, we'll create a card that is controlled using Raspberry Pi. The first component to be used in this experiment is a wood plank. The wood plank holds all components required to build the card. The wood plank is labeled according to the place of each component. For example, this is the place of the pre port, this is for Raspberry Pi, this is for the first motor, second motor, third motor, and fourth motor. There are two holes attached to each component to its side. For example, these are the holes for the pre port. These holes are used for passing a cable tie in order to fix each component on the wood plank. Let's start placing the components on the wood plank. We can start by placing the Raspberry Pi, then the pre port, then the first motor, then the second motor, the third motor, and finally the fourth motor. There are four tires, one attached to each motor. Here is the first one for the first motor, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. Each component requires a cable tie in order to fix it on the wood plank. We can start by preparing the cables for the motors. Here is the first one, here is the second one, here is the third one, and here is the fourth one. There are two additional cables for fixing the Raspberry Pi and the pit port. The experiment uses 12 male-male jumper wires, in addition to 3 male-female jumper wires. Two dials are required of model 1 in 4148 and two transistors prefer to be of type MPS 2222A. Finally, two 1 kilo resistors are required for connecting the base of the transistors to the GPIO output. After preparing all components required for this experiment, next is to fix each component to its place using the cable tie. We can start by the first motor. There are two holes for the first motor. The cable tie will pass from one hole and then return to the second hole. The motor is placed between the two sides of the cable tie. The male part of the cable is plugged into the female part until making sure that the motor is fixed on the wood plank. The extra part of the cable can be cut using a wire cutter. Make sure that the motor is not shaking and fix it correctly. Next is to fix the second motor using the cable tie. This is exactly as we did previously with motor one. The processor beats itself for all other components. Just make sure that the Raspberry Pi elements are away from the cable to avoid damaging it. After making sure that the current components which are four motors, pre port and Raspberry Pi are fixed successfully to the wood plank, we can place the other components which are two dives, two transistors and two resistors to the pre port. The jumper wires are also used for connecting them to the motors and the Raspberry Pi. In this experiment, we will use just two motors for pushing the car. You can connect all four motors for pushing the car in order to increase its speed. After attaching the car tire to the four motors, we have to make sure that the car is moving smoothly. Let's see how the components are connected together using wires. Here is a diagram summarizing most of the connections required in this experiment. The emitter terminal of the transistor is connected to a ground GPIO pin from the Raspberry Pi. The base terminal of the transistor is connected to a 1 kilo resistor. This resistor is connected to an output GPIO pin from the Raspberry Pi. The collector terminal of the transistor is connected to the anode of the diode. The cathode of the diode is connected to a 5 volt GPIO pin from the Raspberry Pi. The motor is connected in parallel with the diode. Because we need to use two motors, we can build two circuits, one for each motor. As we explained, there are three pins required from the Raspberry Pi. One 5V, another ground, and one output. The output GPIO pin is numbered 8 using board numbering from Raspberry Pi. The ground pin is numbered 6, and the 5V pin is numbered 4. The following figure shows the two circuits, each one connected to one motor. These circuits are connected to the GPIO pins numbered 4, 6, and 8 of the Raspberry Pi. 
The remaining step is to create a Python script that targets the GPIO output state in order to run the model. For doing that, we have to power on the Raspberry Pi and have access to it. One way of accessing the Raspberry Pi is by creating a secure shell session between our PC and the Raspberry Pi based on its IP address. For more details, you can read my tutorial titled Building an Image Classifier Running on Raspberry Pi. Here is the Python script used to change the state of the GPIO output to high. High state means that the transistor is active and that the motor will run. At first, the mode of the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi is set to board. That means that the number of pins will be assigned according to the board numbering. The GPIO pin number 8 will be used as an output pin. The default state of that pin is low. By changing its state to high, the transistor will be active and the motor will run. According to the sleep function of the time module, the GPIO pin will be active for 2 seconds and then its state will be changed back to low. After running the script, the two motors will run and push the car forward and here is the result.